yeah, so I was talking about the, the Vault solution. Uh, it's a range of localization products, but we, which can be complemented by with uh, accessories. Uh, so we call it uh, agile and accurate. Uh, so it's uh, targeted at the industry. And uh, what we're trying to achieve is to have the gain of an accurate RTLS system uh, without having the pain uh, associated with it. So I'm just going to uh, show um, some RTLS technologies. And here we're going to be interested only in the one that are called precise, precise, which uh, very very usually usually uh, involves uh, submeter accuracy. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, comment on the 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter. In the end, in real life, uh, let's say submeter accuracy. And uh, here we have uh, several techniques. Uh, so the angle of arrival, and in particular with Bluetooth, uh, the ultra wideband uh, time difference of arrival, the ultra wideband two way ranging, and or specific technique of Volt ultra wideband, which is a combination of dash seven and ultra wideband signals, uh, which allows to gain. Um, uh, benefits from both. Um, so if we look at the at, at this table, basically uh, they all have uh, advent advantages and uh, drawbacks. Uh, but one main pain uh, point that we are we are trying to solve is the cost of the infrastructure and the pain, um, the difficulties to install it uh, in factories uh, or warehouse or this kind of uh, environment. And th the reason why this uh, infrastructure is painful to install is mainly because they all need power supply because they are all uh, consumed too much uh, to stay on battery. And very often there is a network connectivity required uh, for all those uh, anchors of the infrastructure. And with Vault, we are providing a very unique solution uh, with battery-powered uh, anchors, and thus uh, removing the pain of the deployment and allowing to uh, add more anchor afterwards without having to re uh, reschedule big uh, um, big construction work uh, or retrofit. So I'm, I'm going to talk about those uh, different techniques. So the first one, and here I'm, I'm just, I just took uh, an image from the Silicon Labs uh, website. Uh, so it's the Bluetooth angle of arrival. Uh, you already heard about angle of arrival uh, right before. Uh, so typically a Bluetooth beacon will emit uh, a signal on a regular basis. And that's all it does. And you have locators that are actually antenna arrays uh, that will allow to uh, find the, the angle of arrival of that signal. And this uh, angle information is then uh, transmitted to the location engine that will compute uh, the device location. So in this case, the device is not consuming that much because it's uh, sending uh, beacons on a regular basis, so it's just a simple beacon. Sometimes there is extra information in the beacon inform in the beacon uh, frame, uh, but that's mainly uh, emitting device. Uh, on the so the all the power constraint is on the uh, antenna that needs to listen to all those beacons and compute uh, the angle of arrival. The second. Uh, the second technique I'm going to talk about is the uh, ultra wideband time difference of arrival. And here I, I'm uh, quoting Decker Wave uh, for the pros and cons. Uh, so the principle is about the same. The tag is a blinking device, it's like a beacon, uh, except that now it's blinking in ultra wide an ultra wideband signal. Uh, so ultra wideband signal has the wideband and a very um, a precise uh, time resolution. And what is done is 
uh, that signal is received by several anchors, which uh, will timestamp uh, the arrival time. And if those anchors are perfectly synchronized, uh then the location engine will receive all those uh, timestamps and find what is the difference of uh, timing of arrival for each one of the um, of the anchor and will be able to uh, determine the the difference of uh propagation time so the difference of distance between the tag and the anchor so the the drawback of uh, so again, the, the tag is just emitting, so it's emitting ultra wideband signal. Uh, currently, it consumes much more than a Bluetooth beacon, but still, uh, it's uh, it makes it a uh, long life. Um, again, the constraint is on the anchor, and now it's not only that they need to be powered, but also they need to be synchronized. So this involves a lot of uh, signaling in ultrawide band between the anchors, but also a lot of communication between the anchor and the location engine, just for that synchronization part, which uh, in many cases involves uh, being on a wired network uh, so that this information can flow freely. So it, it requires a very large bandwidth between the anchors and the location engine. Uh, so making it uh, main powered and very often connected to uh, and connected to to a Ethernet network. So the sec the third technique uh, it's the ultra wide band to wear ranging. So here uh, what what's going on is the tag will communicate with anchors and they will exchange uh, several signals. Uh, typically, uh, you will have uh, three packets exchanged between the, the tag and the anchor uh, with uh, timestamp, and this will be uh, this will allow the tag to compute the um, the distance uh, by uh, measuring the round trip uh, time uh, between the tag and the anchor. So it consumes much more than the angle of arrival on the tag side because it has, instead of sending just one packet for that is received by all anchors, now it has to do exchange uh, information with all the anchors uh, that it wants to range with. And also on the anchor side, it means it's, it has to listen uh, most of the time to be able to receive those uh, messages from the tags uh, making them uh, that uh, main powered also. So the the original Volt solution, so it's a solution composed of uh, a tag uh, which combines Dash 7 and ultra wideband radio, uh, some anchors that are battery powered, uh, gateway ac Dash 7 access point, and uh, network server location engine. Um, so it's the four um, elements of this solution, and I'll go uh, more in details in the in the way it, uh, it works and what uh, benefits of Dash Seven we leverage in this solution. So the the difference, um, I mean, the first step of this uh, ranging is actually using a, a Dash Seven discovery. And the anchors are actually uh, listening in uh, in Dash 7, uh, consuming very little because of the Dash 7 uh, protocol. And when the tag wants to get a localization, it will start uh, sending a broadcast message only targeted to the anchors, and only the anchors that are in the vicinity uh, will answer to that message. So a single message from the tag will get answers from the anchors in the vicinity. And here, in order to be, so what we leverage in terms of uh, Dash 7 features is the ability to have a tag-to-tag -tag communication, uh, the ability to send broadcast uh, requests, 
embedding queries. So in the query, we can uh, uh, we will select uh, a specific characteristic of the anchor file system. Uh, so we will only get response from the device that are actually on course. And uh, we are using um, uh, irate uh, FSK so that these messages are quick. And we are also using uh, the link budget measurement or estimation that is embedded in the Dash 7 packet, uh, which will allow to filter out the anchor that are too far away. Uh, by requesting in the in the query to have only the anchors that have a strong enough link budget. So combining all that makes it uh, possible in one single uh, exchange uh, to wake up your anchors, uh, select the one that you want to range with uh, that are only in the vicinity. So the second step is uh, an ultra wideband two way ranging, and it's actually scheduled uh, based on the reception of the dash seven response. So only the anchors that are that have uh, that are of interest because they are close enough uh, will be arranged. And here we do a two way ranging with uh, those anchors. The third step uh, will be uh, using dash seven again for the reporting. Uh, this way, as opposed to the other solution, the anchors are not uh, don't don't have to be connected to the the network because they will be not they won't be the one that are that will be reporting the the measurement information to the location engine. So only the tag will uh, report it. And it will use the tag to infrastructure communication, uh, and in this case, uh, we are using. Uh, either normal rate FSK or we also have an extension for to use uh, LoRa modulation for extended range. And eventually, the the information is uh, transmitted from the gateway to the location engine, where the the Wizi Cloud will compute, update the tag information, compute the location, but can also record some other uh, side information like. Uh, motion or uh, other information from the sensor. And from that location engine, of, of course, the, um, the, um, the customer cloud can be connected to that location engine to, uh, to get all the location information from the different devices. So uh, to summarize, what are the advantages that Dash 7 brings into the picture uh, and why it is interesting to combine it uh, with ultra in this situation. Uh, so we leverage the flexible communication scheme, which allows to have communication from device to infrastructure, but also device to device, tag to anchor. And also to combine several access profiles like low rate with normal rate with high rate. And this way we can have a fast communication with the anchor and a longer range communication with the gateway. Uh, we leverage the low power consumption with the downlink capability, which uh, allows from the tag to talk to the anchor. Uh, we are extensively using the smart addressing with out queries. Uh, to select the right anchors. Uh, we use the link budget estimation, uh, which allows to uh, do a pre-filter on the anchor that you want to range with. Um, we obviously, and those were not this, are not related to, uh, to the localization technique, but we can also update all the objects uh, remotely over the air and we, and we also can have large scale installation uh, that uh, that what we do with uh, other type of sensors, but uh, this is also true when you have uh, uh, hundreds or thousands of device on the site. So this translates into uh, an advantage with uh, for Volt, which is uh, a unique combination of Flow Power Dash 7 with 
high precision measurements of distance using ultra wide bands, uh, accurate localization with a very light infrastructure. So with the Anchor battery powered, which lasts uh, typically five years uh, and require absolutely no construction work to deploy. Uh, long tag operation, uh, a small tag like this uh, can typically last for five years. Uh, we are using, uh, we can access those devices uh, with real time uplink for the update of the localization, but also downlink. And we have some of those um, uh, devices that can actually blink uh, to help find them in the last matter. And uh, we can also combine this localization um, infrastructure. Uh, with other type of devices like uh, like the WISP, which is a sensor platform, and we can have other type of sensors that are using that uh, Dash 7 network that is deployed. Uh, so it can serve as um, a local uh, network where you can put other functions, um, like U-Space, which is a social distanciation uh, tag, or other type of um, uh, sensing elements. Like we also have uh, actuators like uh, uh, zero um, LED lights uh, to to trigger alarms or warn people or this kind of thing. Uh, so this is the end of the presentation. Uh, don't hesitate to visit uh, vault.xyz or contact us uh, at BusyLab if you need additional information. And obviously, if you have some questions, it's also uh, the good time to ask for them. Hello, Michael. Very interesting presentation and also gives a, a nice overview on how uh, Dashevin is very... Uh, um, uh, uh, I can't find the English word. <laughs> Works very well together. I wasn't looking for that word. Uh, with other technologies and how they both, uh, when com combined with others, actually uh, have a huge advance, uh, advanced bandwidth. Uh, one question from Philip, which is already answered by uh, Jordan, but I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, is which channels uh, are used, uh, or local island channels are used. So that's all the 6.4 gigahertz channels, according to Jordan. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that means, of course, with, with uh, uh, that you're, especially with the combination with BLE, you're now operating in three different bands, I, I presume? Yeah. Uh, we are uh, we are operating in uh, 868 915 for the the dash seven and uh, and obviously in the tower band uh, band. Okay. Um, are there any other questions on the, from the audience? What are the, uh, the, the, the based on the uh, the presentation which you now uh, gave? What, what do you think are like the killer applications where you uh, would first want to go for? Because uh, of course there, are, there is already a lot of ultra wideband lo a lot. There is already some ultra wideband localization. Um, in which, especially in which use cases do you see the biggest advantage of this multimodal system? Uh, it, it's actually uh, it's actually used. Uh, already in, in some uh, factories. And uh, the goal is to, so I, I see a question about uh, real-time uh, uh, positioning of moving objects. Uh, this is typically a solution where you want to locate objects that are not moving all the time, or maybe you're interested when they're not moving anymore. Like if you take uh, a tank uh, containing some kind of uh, product, uh, and what you want to know is uh, where is this tank sitting now? And where, when it's uh, obviously when it's moving within the factory, I mean, you're not going to be running after it uh, to feel it. So you're going to be looking for it when it's empty or when it's full and you need the product. Uh, so it's mostly for partially static objects. Uh, that will uh, be located um, when, when they're sitting. And we are looking at uh, low frequency um, um, ranging for 
for moving objects, basically. And I say low frequency, uh, it, I'm saying, uh, I mean, it's not, it's like once every five to 10 seconds, maybe. So that's why I called uh, low frequency. Uh, and the, so the typical use case would be locating assets in the industry or locating stocks or locating uh, containers that you want to use when they're empty, you want to reuse them, or uh, when they're full, you want to know where they are because they contain something you're interested in. Okay, any other questions from the audience? What is the expected localization range for your ultra solution? Uh, it's, I mean, basically the the range is really in par with all the two-way ranging solution. I mean, there is nothing uh, very special about it. Uh, we are using a DecaWave chipset, so we have the capabilities of the DecaWave chipset. So I would say, depending on the precision you want, uh, you're going to be between 25 to 50 meters. So it's 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 um, imagine that you that you're uh, outside of the ultra vibrant range. Can you still do something with the dash seven link which you have to uh, have an estimate? So we yeah the, the there is another member of the, of the family which is the volt dash seven, uh, which is just using uh, RSSI between the anchor and the device. Yeah. But still, it can give an estimate. Uh, here we say the accuracy is like two to 10 meters, uh, but still it gives you an estimate. And uh, if you are in that certain room, it's different from another room. So yeah. you already have uh, some, some indication. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Very interesting. Um, I would, uh, we have still two minutes. So uh, let, let's, uh, let's try to uh, keep it in the time frame. Uh, for everyone, the presentations are will come online as well later on. Uh, Michael, maybe you can add your email address in the chat as well, so people can yes. directly contact you if there are any additional uh, uh, discussions. Um, also, you're always welcome to uh, give feedback on, uh, on which topics you would like us to organize a webinar or which kind of uh, companies you would like us to invite uh, for, for um for, for, for a talk. We try to combine a bit or or, 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 or or depending on the month, have a more commercial or a more technical uh, discussion. Uh, if I, we could easily go more in detail, of course, in the protocol, but that's a bit uh, up to what, what you would really like to have. So any uh, remarks or uh, comments on that one are also welcome. You can always uh, contact us at uh, administrator at uh, alliance.org or just through the website. You have multiple options to uh, follow us. For the people who are not uh, in the uh, mailing list yet, you can also uh, register to the mailing list uh, and you will get updated from any uh, new events. Uh, and also for the members which are online, there will be a member online event uh, in the next uh, few months because we have to um, vote for the new board. So that's an important thing, which uh, our president has to kick off in the meantime. Our president also, Michael, here in the screen. Just so yeah. again, thanks uh, for both uh, Nori and Michael for the presentation. Thanks for the audience for listening and also uh, for all the questions which you have. Yeah, See thank you, you all time. for being there. Bye-bye.